Well, obviously, this is a fantastic win, a fantastic night for the University of Alabama. I uh, couldn't be a prouder of a group of players, uh, especially the resiliency they showed in the game, uh, getting behind, not playing very well in the first half, uh, kept clawing back uh, in the second half, and even after we missed the field goal to win it in regulation, still showed resiliency to overcome hard and uh, made some great plays. Um, we needed a spark on offense. Uh, Tua certainly gave us that and did a really good job. And uh, defense stepped up when they had to. Uh, we didn't do very well on third down in the first half, which really hurt us. But uh, this is a great win. It's a great team win. Uh, somebody tried to give me a game ball. I don't think you could give anybody a game ball. Uh, it has to be a team ball. And that's exactly what we'll do with it. You know, when we lost last year on the last play of the game, uh, we said don't waste the failing uh, is the lesson that we all wanted to learn. And I think the resiliency that this team is showing all year long uh, certainly uh, proves that they sort of learned something from that and uh, couldn't be a prouder of a bunch of coaches and a bunch of players and the people in our organization who contribute to the success of University of Alabama. As a reminder, we will take questions for Coach first. We'll start over here to our left. Uh, Nick, Pat, 40 from Yahoo Sports. Could you just go through the decision to change quarterbacks at halftime, and was there any reticence to do so? No, I, I felt like that, um, you know, we've had this in our mind that if we were struggling offensively that we would give to an opportunity uh, even in the last game. And uh, no disrespect to Jalen, but... Uh, the real thought was is, you know, we came into the game thinking that we were going to run the ball and be able to run quarterback runs, which we made a couple of explosive plays on. Uh, but just without the absence of a passing game and being able to make explosive plays and be able to convert on third down, um, I just didn't feel like we could run the ball well enough. And I thought Tua would give us a better chance um, and a spark, which he certainly did. And... Um, you know, I, I couldn't be prouder of him taking advantage of the opportunity. We have total confidence uh, in him. We played him a lot in a lot of games this year, and uh, he did very well, and he certainly did a great job tonight. Go back over here right to our left, sort of in the middle. Lindsey Schnell, USA Today. Uh, uh, Nick, after Tua threw that pick, he came over on the sideline, put his arm around you, and looked like he said, Coach, it's okay. I'll, I'll get it back. I wondered if you could walk us through that and then – were you surprised at his moxie? Well, the issue was, is we missed a signal. <laughs> In other words, everybody was running a running play, and he thought it was a passing play. <laughs> so it causes a problem when all the receivers are blocking <laughs> instead of running a pass route. And then it sort of quadruples the problem when a quarterback throws it to him anyway. But we learn from those things, right? Yes, sir. And he was just reassuring me that he would learn from it. We're going to take our next question over here on the aisle. Hi, hi Coach. Mark Tracy from the New York Times. Uh, two part of very quickly. First, when it's like a game like this, first half not playing so well, the field goal missed uh, at the end of regulation, is it, it looks like it's hard. I mean, it, what does that feel like in the moment? Well, it is hard. Um, we knew it would be a hard game. Georgia's got a great team. They did a great job. Um, they had a good plan against our defense. Their quarterback did a really good job of, you know, checking some plays and hitting some passes, whether it was split safeties or middle of the field. So we were struggling a little bit in the first half uh, defensively. But, you know, if you can't overcome hard, you, you, you're never going to have any great victories in your life. So uh, that's what our players know. Uh, we, we, we try to teach them to play the next play. And, show resiliency and make the next play. So that's exactly what we did. And we got him stopped to a field goal in overtime and took advantage of the opportunity, uh, even though Tua probably couldn't have thrown that pass if I could have got a hold of him after he took the sack, but I couldn't get out there fast enough. Partially answered my second question, but I guess you really have nothing left to prove. I mean, however many championships it is at this point, what keeps you coming back through 
hard games, obviously that some of them end well, but lots of them well, but what keeps you coming back year after year? Well, it's not just about winning a championship. I mean, every team, you want to do the best job you can, and every team wants to be successful. And as a coach, you want to see your team reach their full potential. But as a college coach, and the thing that I like about college coaching is you have an opportunity to affect people. Uh, you have an opportunity to help players be more successful in life because they're involved in the program, whether it's personal development, academic support, graduating from school, learning lessons. The, the message to the team tonight after this game was – I hope you take something from this game and the resiliency that you showed in this game, and it helps you be more successful in life. So it's not just about winning a championship. I mean, I know that's what you all write about and what you talk about and all that, and we, we like winning and we hate losing. I, but there's more to it than that. In the interest of time, we are going to open it up for questions for all three, but we'll take our next one from right over here on the right. Coach, uh, Steve Moulton, 97.7 The Zone out of Huntsville, Alabama. I noticed after the game, uh, you had a moment with uh, Anthony Jennings. He was up on the stage as well. I uh, was wondering if you could walk through that moment and what it was like to get him up on the stage to enjoy the celebration as well. Well, Anthony's been a great leader on our team, had a fabulous game against Clemson, had as many production points as any player had all year. Um got hurt late in the game with two minutes to go in the game. And the guy's such a great competitor and was such a big part of the team. And the players, it was really important to our players that he got here today because he's been in a hospital for quite some time. So it was just great to see him. He was so happy for everyone. Uh, I think he's happy with the success that he had this year. And he knows that he'll, in a couple months, he'll be able to come back and contribute to the team again. Take our next question over here on the far left aisle. Nick Danu has been from the All-American. Alex Leatherwood, Devontae Smith, Henry Ruggs, they also joined too and having some really great performances tonight. What is it about this freshman class that has allowed them to excel and set them apart? Well, Najee Harris played really well. Uh, Jerry Judy made a nice catch at the end. Um, so th this is... This was, I think, one of our best recruiting classes, this freshman class from last year, uh, especially with offensive talent. Um, so, you know, that's something that we have to build on in this year's recruiting and continue to build on because we're going to lose a lot of good players who are seniors, probably have several players go out for the draft. So our team turns over a little quicker, so it creates a lot of opportunity for younger players to get a chance to play, and those guys played a lot this year and contributed a lot to our success. Go back here in the middle on the aisle. Um, Nick and two, I guess this question is for both. Uh, Nick, you said you couldn't get out there fast enough for the sack, but what was your vantage point and um, impressed with the execution Tua made on the game-winning touchdown? And same with you, Tua. Just could you walk us through that touchdown pass a little bit and what you saw? Um, I mean, we, we called, we called four, four verticals on that play. Um, after the sack, we just got up, you know, just took it to the next play. <clears throat> and... Uh, throughout that process, we got the ball. Um, it looked like they were running two trap. Um, the corner trapped on that single receiver side, and I held the safety in the middle um, as the over was coming. Um, and I looked back out, and he was wide open. Smitty was wide open, so I hit him, and you know, here we are now. Thank God. Take our next question right over here on the left-hand side. Uh, Nick, uh, can you speak to the improbability of leaning on this many freshmen this late in the season with this much at stake? I mean, you've been doing this a long time. I don't remember you winning a game quite like this. Well, no, I don't think we ever have. Uh, but a lot of those guys were in spring practice last year. A lot of those guys are really mature for their age. Uh, and they were ready to make contribution. And... Um, and they certainly did a fantastic job for us this year. There's no doubt about that. You know, we had, I think one of the things that makes me most proud of this team is, and I'm surprised nobody asked it, we've never had this many games missed by starters in a season, ever. And to be able to overcome that with the next guy up, whoever it was, um, to go out there and play the way they played together as a group and trusted and believed in each other. 
And I think that respect and trust is something that's really important to have in a good team, and that's something this team had. As a reminder, this is an opportunity to ask questions for coach and players. We'll go next right here in the middle section. Nancy Armour with USA Today Sports. This is for Tua. Uh, Tua, you've played in games before, but most of the time it's been when the games were already in hand. What was that like to come in with Alabama trailing, and, and at what point did you feel like, I've got this? I mean, we practice throughout, you know, the, the year. We go in with the ones sometimes. You know, our, us freshmen, we're going with the ones sometimes. Um, we trade reps with, with the ones. Um, we go in with the twos, you know. Um, and I think preparation leading up to this point um, has been the key thing, you know, with our offensive coaches helping us throughout the process, um, you know, and just building the trust within um, each other, you know, from the O-line uh, to the receivers, um, creating a bond with, with each other. I think that's helped us, um, you know, build confidence coming into this game to where, you know, if, if, you, gotta, if you gotta go in, if your number's called, then, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to, to give the team the best, the best placement or how should I say this? You give the team the best opportunity to win the game. We're gonna go back up on the riser in the back. Greg Collier, Action Sports and News. Coach Saban, two seasons ago, we saw you make a fantastic decision to do an onside kick and it worked for you. Today, we see the change in quarterback and it worked. Is this just part of the excellence that you were speaking about earlier this week? Uh, I don't know. I can't answer that. I, I think that to a large degree, I trust players, players that do things the right way, players who um, prepare the right way, practice the right way. Um, they're dependable. You know, we try to create a culture of accountability for our players uh, so that they can be successful personally, academically, and athletically. And when players respond to that and do it, I have total faith, trust, and confidence to put them out there. And um, so I have that in Tua, and I certainly have had it in Duran. He played when he was a freshman, too. And he's the most articulate nose guard in the country, if you guys had asked him a question. <laughs> <laughs> Next question back over here on our left. Uh, this question's for Tua again. Joe Goodman with AL.com. Uh, Hawaii to Alabama is a long way, uh, distance-wise, culturally. What, what's that experience been like for you this first year? Have you ever been homesick at any point? Uh, just kind of sum it up. You know, I do get homesick at times. Um, I miss my family back home. Although, you know, my, my parents are here. I'm talking about, you know, my dad's siblings. Um, but, I mean... I don't know how Coach Saban found me all the way in Hawaii from Alabama, you know? So I just thank God he, he found me and, you know, we're here right now. Um, I, I don't know. The, the biggest difference from Hawaii and, and Alabama would, would probably be there's no beaches, you know? But other than that, I mean, the people are, are very nice. People are very religious. Um, and, you know, there's football too. So, I mean, well, how, how much better could it get? Next question right over here. Stay on our left. Uh, for two as well, Pat, 40 from Yahoo Sports. Where does your poise come from to allow you to come into a situation like this tonight and perform the way you did? I would say my poise comes from my faith. Um, just being able to come on to the sideline every time after I, I go into a drive. You know, I, I just pray for peace, you know. I just pray asking God, you know, let your will be done in me and, you know, the rest will follow. And, um that's, that's the best way I could explain it. You know, before I go in, do a drive, to, into a drive, I mean, I pray a little bit, say my prayers, and, you know, we, we do it. And when we come off the field, say a little prayer, you know, just to keep me calm, and we go from there. Right here in the middle. This one's for Tua, too. Tua, a couple years ago, Marcus became the superstar of college football and really put Hawaii on the map in terms of skill players. And I know you were hailed as the next Marcus. Did you hear from him today? And then I see you up there with your Hawaii lei. You know, what does it mean for your state and for Polynesian people? You know, I think this is very big for our state. Um, you know, for, for us kids um, back home, um, making our state proud is the biggest thing, you know, and to be able to do this on a national level um, and a big stage um, is just a great opportunity. Um, but, um, you know, it's just great. It's just great exposure for us as well, you know, our people. Um, and 
Um, I mean, I just, just thank God that that I'm here. <laughs> I heard I, I heard nothing from Marcus before this. Um, I don't I don't want to check my phone right now. You know, I just want to see my family and just enjoy this team with, or just enjoy this win with my team. Go right over here on the aisle. Uh, WHEP Sports Radio Ball One, Foley, Alabama. This is for Duran and Tua. Duran, you had two MVP for performances. Why do you think you played so well to successive games? And for Tua, did you have a special relationship with Devante? You had that pirouette movement against Vanderbilt and now the winning touchdown to win the national championship. Oh, I just think um, <clears throat> I just wanted to go out there and just give it my all and uh, just leave it all on the field. And um, no matter what happened in the outcome of the game, I just knew I gave, gave everything. And um, I think I did that both games, and um, it just came came to uh, came came my dreams came true. So, you know, for me, I would say I, I haven't only built a good relationship with Devontae. I mean, I think that goes for all our skills. You know, throughout practices, um, I mean, we we get the opportunity to throw it to everybody. You know, and um, when things aren't going right in practice, you know, we we come, we talk about it on the sideline while the ones are in. You know, just try to change things up sometimes, and um, I, I I think that's the best way to explain it. You know, creating our bond is just being able to come on sideline, talk to each other about what we could have done better on, on that play, and, and we go from there. Right over here on our right-hand side in the middle. Steve Moulton again from 97.7 The Zone in Huntsville. Duran, uh, Coach Saban mentioned it, the changeover on defense, and uh, Anthony Jennings injured, uh, Sean Dion injured. I mean, we could go through the injuries, but... Tell me about the process of adapting on the defensive side of the football this year. Um, I think we just try to do a good job of everybody just knowing what to do. All the young guys um, buying in and uh, focusing on the, on the playbook and, and when the name's called, just you know, not being nervous or anything, just being able to uh, play ball and just execute the game plan. Go in the back on the riser. Now, this is Gary McKillops from AP Radio. This is for Duran. What, uh, what were you thinking at halftime, and maybe what did your coach have to say to, to get you guys going again? Uh, I, I definitely thought we weren't executing as, as a team, and um, I think we went in, and Coach, coach Saban told us that and uh, told us we needed to tighten things up, and uh, the, I, I, I guess the team uh, heard Coach, and we came out and tried to play our best ball, and everybody gave it their all to the, uh, the last minute. Back to left-hand side. Uh, this question is for Duran and uh, Nick. Uh, every year, uh, almost every year, you guys have replaced defensive coordinators. How have you kept the program or the defense at a high level? And uh, has it gotten increasingly difficult over the last couple of years? Well, we've been very fortunate um, all the time we've been in Alabama and the time we've been at LSU. We've always played the same system on defense, but we've always been able to hire somebody who knew the system, who had been in the system before. Kirby had been in it before. Um, Will Muschamp learned it. And Jeremy Pruitt had been in it before. So it was an easy transition for them to continue to implement the same thing for the players. Um, you know, we'll have to look at what we want to do to try to get the best coaches in there to help our players, develop our players, you know, with this next group. but. We have some good coaches on our staff. Take our next question over here to the left standing. Nick, as a coach, how do you balance fostering competition in the same position group with making sure everybody's working toward the same, you know, kind of broader team goals? I'm talking obviously about quarterback. Well, I, I think we, we spend a lot of time talking to guys about what are your goals, what are your aspirations, what do you want to accomplish and what you want to do. And I obviously like it when one of these guys tell me that they want to play in the NFL someday and they want to graduate from college. So then every time they don't do what they're supposed to do or they're not accountable, whether it's in school, as a person, um, or as a player, I just can ask, how is this behavior going to help you get where you want to go? So it is about the individual. It is about the individual and their goals and aspirations for what they want to accomplish. But it's also having respect for the principles and values of the team and trusting and respecting those as well as their teammates. 
and not putting those goals and aspirations ahead of what's best for the team so that they buy into doing their job. So um, I just never want any one of our players to ever give any reason to use the word but after they describe them. You know, there was one word that I always, two most compelling words in a draft in my eight years in the NFL in a draft report when he read a player was always and and but. Because when they read a good player and they said, and he's a good person, he graduated from school, he was loved by his teammates, he was a captain of the team. I, but if they read the same player and they said, but, got a domestic violence charge against him, he's got five positive marijuana tests. I mean, which guy you want to put on your team? So why would anybody give anybody a reason to say, but? about what they do, and that's what we try to get our players to do so that they create value for themselves and their future. Got two more. We'll start right here. Uh, Thomas Scott, Selma <coughs> Times Journal. Coach Saban, you mentioned the importance of third down conversions uh, in your opening statement. Uh, this is for you and Duran. Tell me a little bit about what was difficult about stopping Georgia in the first half and then how you were able to um, shut them down on their ensuing drives and forcing them to punt. Uh, closer towards the fourth quarter? Well, I think Georgia did a really good job because there were three occasions where we played split safety coverage, which denies the ball deep in longer yardage situations, third and 20, third and 11, and I think third and nine, maybe. And they ran draw plays. And Sony Michelle made people miss and made a first down. So then we started playing more man-to-man -man in middle of the field coverage. And, you know, Jake Fromm, that guy, he knows where to go with the ball. And they were running what we call chop routes, was inside fade to the slot receiver. That's what they hit for 80-yard touchdown to Hardeman. And um, so we just had to kept, kept trying to adapt and adjust. And then when they got ahead in the game, all right, they, we started playing a little more man-to-man, -man, and they actually were running the ball a little bit more, which – you know, we got off the field on several third downs because we were playing pretty good coverage. Um, I think it was just, like I said earlier, the way the way we executed. And um, Coach Saban and uh, Coach Coach Pruitt always talk about um, just farm your own land and uh, do your job. And I think we were just out there trying to make plays instead of focusing on what we had to do as a as a defense to um, be successful. But I think we settled down and um, just just got back to playing a uh, good Bama defense. <coughs> and our last question, Nancy. <coughs> was there a time, or can you think of a particular time, whether it was during spring practice or, or even during the season, that you kind of looked at Tua or that he did something and you thought he's as good as, as advertised or maybe even better? No, I think all year long we had lots of confidence in Tua and we played him um, so that if this – situation occurred that he would be ready to play. And I know that he was never in a situation where he was behind and had to come back in a game, but the game experience, the confidence, managing the team, uh, he does a really good job in practice. Uh, Jalen was sick a couple days uh, before the Clemson game, and, um, you know, the players really respond well to him. Uh, he's a good leader. Uh, he's very well liked by his teammates, and he's got a very positive, upbeat attitude that affects other people around him in a very positive way. So uh, I think all those things are really positive attributes for a quarterback, and I have total confidence in him. But I, don't, I also think that I should say that we would not be here in this championship game if it wasn't for some of the very good plays that Jalen Hurts made throughout the course of the year. All right, we have two guys that we have really good confidence in, and they have really tremendous respect for each other, and they help each other. So um, that's something that's pretty unique on our team. 